If you have a dryer that has an awful squealing, thumping, or other nasty noise, let's go over some common culprits today. First, let's start by checking the drum for trash or garbage that can make the noise and get rid of it, then let's go from there. Now before you open up the back of this unit, make sure to unplug the dryer cord to kill all electric to the dryer. You will be working with a lot of high voltage areas, so make sure it is totally off and unplugged. Now that we're at the back of the dryer, we just want to use a quarter inch hex head screwdriver or drill gun if you got one to remove all the screws. There's between eight and 10 screws on this back plate, depending if this steam port is on the unit or not. This adds an extra two and it's a little bit complex to deal with. There is this plastic cap you wanna take off. So just now go ahead and make sure that you get all the screws off of this unit. Don't forget to save all your screws. I have a little metal basket that I'm using to save all of them. In order to remove the blower housing on the rear of the dryer, we need to remove two screws underneath where the lint filter is. Make sure to use your hand to prevent the screws from falling down at the housing, although we could find them easily if we needed to later on. Once you have the lint filter screws removed, there are three to four screws on the blower housing at the bottom, depending on your model of dryer. You need a one quarter inch hex head screwdriver to remove all of the screws from the housing at the bottom. Once you've gotten them removed, you can slide the blower housing off of your dryer. Note that removing this housing is a tight fit, and you may need to wiggle the housing up and out. If you have issues removing the housing, watch further on how to lift the top lid of the dryer. It may give you a little bit more room. Once the housing is removed, you can inspect the blower wheel where the housing is for damage. Often, items could get stuck in the housing where the wheel is, which could jam it or take pieces off. Or the item could fall in such a way that it's rubbing against the wheel during its operation, which can cause all kinds of sounds and issues. As you can see with this dryer, the blower housing itself has all kinds of junk in it, so you definitely want to clean it out with a vacuum cleaner and brush as best you can. Make sure also the wheel itself is not damaged, which could cause additional noises and other extra issues with the dryer. Once the blower housing and assembly is all checked, you need to make sure you put the blower housing back in together just like we took it out. Again, not a lot of wiggle room with this, and the bottom of the housing usually is where you find that it catches on the dryer chassis, so you need to slowly work it back into the chassis. A small flat bladed screwdriver can help press it into place a little easier if needed. Then you're going to reinstall the three to four hex head screws and you're done. Make sure to put the dryer back plate into place and then reinstall all the screws to be done with the rear portion of the dryer. Next, you're going to take the putty knife and sweep it through the gap in the lid between the top and bottom to locate two plastic clips that hold the dryer top plate on. Once you find it, press the putty knife in to release the clips. Now sometimes I find that one clip is easier than the other, so try pressing on the other clip while gently pulling up on the dryer lid to dislodge it. Sometimes this can be difficult and if all else fails, you can remove the 5 16 screws on the back of the dryer near the top, and this should allow you to move the whole dryer top and console forward to where you can undo the hinges. Make sure to reinstall the screws though so you can lift the lid up and backwards if you had to go that route. Now you can start to inspect the belt. If it's missing or very damaged, this could potentially cause the dryer not to start or run. I decided to push the drum and rotate it from the top to see if it would work properly, but this is a very bad idea because the holes I'm using are sharp. It's better to turn the drum using the inside baffle if you want to check for anything. Next, you want to release the wire harness for the door switch. You're going to use a flat bladed screwdriver or putty knife to press the tab in and up to release. Older style harnesses use the same system, but they are way harder to separate the pieces and it can take a lot of effort, and the smaller the screwdriver, the better for this scenario. Now to take the front of the dryer off to access the components, once the door switch is removed, or separated at least, you'll need a 5 16th screwdriver to remove the screw holding in each side of the dryer. Again, be very careful where the screw goes because these like to fall out. There's one on the left side and one on the right side, and once you release those, the dryer front can be removed. Now to remove the front of the dryer, pull up, then pivot towards the front of the dryer door. The door is held on by two small sets of fingers at the very bottom, and the door has to come off these sets of fingers to actually remove it. The dryer drum, once this front is removed, will drop down and forward, but that's normal. To remove the idler pulley, 
At the very bottom right side, you'll need to push the pulley to the right to loosen the belt or move it from the dryer motor pulley. Here's a pro tip though. If you push it all the way forward on the motor pulley, then pull the idler towards you slightly, you can get the belt off much easier in one motion with one hand so you don't block the camera from filming. Once you have all this done, you can use the belt if it's intact to pull the drum out. The casing of the dryer has a bulge in the middle that will allow you to remove the drum easier and not even contact the sides of the dryer. You can now inspect the dryer drum for cleanliness as well as a few components in the unit. You should be able to see two dryer drum wheels, the motor and the idler pulley among other things on the bottom, and then the bulkhead on the very top for damage. One thing I've seen become a problem on newer models of dryers is the rear bulkhead, the top of it. You can see on this one, paint has been rubbed off of the top, but in catastrophic issues, the drum can actually cut into the top of the bulkhead, creating horrific tears and damage to the metal, which will destroy your drum. Typically, this would be caused if the drum's rear felt has been damaged or a chunk has been out of it, or it could be totally gone. If the bulkhead has been damaged, there's no real solution to fix this outside of replacing the bulkhead and drum or the dryer felt, depending on how bad it is. Next, let's look at the two roller wheels. The one on the right spins freely, while the one on the left only spins a little bit. You also want to look at the wheels to see if they are developing any flat spots or chunks of rubber that have been taken out, which could force the drum to rub and wear down the wheel, the rubber itself. This can cause all kinds of noises, like bumps or thuds, on every drum rotation. To take the roller off, we need to unscrew the metal bracket holding this wheel on. Once the bracket's off, you need to separate it from the bracket and the shaft itself by simply pulling it off. Once you have the bracket off, you need a flat bladed screwdriver or some sort of small pick to pull off the tri-ring collar from the shaft. It's really slow and difficult to do this, especially on camera, but you essentially need to pull off every triangle area away from the slot in the metal shaft until it comes off. Once it's off, you can simply pull the wheel out. On this shaft on the left, you can see why the wheel wasn't probably turning very well. It looks like there's some sort of animal or pet hair that has spun onto the shaft and we need to clean it off and remove everything to where it's just the bare metal. Once you have all the hair off the wheel, you want to use a piece of sandpaper or emery cloth to polish the shaft to restore it. When you have that done, you can install the new roller wheel, which comes pre-greased. You'll then install the new triangle ring to the shaft by slowly working it onto the shaft with a flat bladed screwdriver, one corner or one flat piece of the tri-ring at a time. Once you have this done, you're going to put the metal bracket on and then there's going to be a small metal washer depending on the kit that you use and the easiest way to press it into place on the bracket is to use your screwdriver. I think I use a 9 16 and put it into place. Once you have this done, you can just simply reinstall the bracket at the bottom with the hex head and you're all done with this. Then on the second wheel, you're going to do the exact same process with the tri-ring, the wheel, polishing and everything. But by the time you get to the second wheel, it's much easier to do than the first one. On the idler pulley itself, simply look for wear and tear on the pulley that could wear a groove or spot into the plastic pulley itself. This would cause the belt to eat at the pulley, causing noise and would eventually destroy the belt and damage the pulley. And I will have a link to the repair parts in the description and comments. And if you buy the parts from there, it does help the channel for us to make more videos like this. One other idea to look at is the dryer motor itself. This one has a bit of lint on it, but is in otherwise fine condition. Sometimes the bearing inside the motor can go bad, or there could be an obstruction somewhere on or very close to the motor. So make sure that the motor and everything inside the dryer is clean to prevent lint buildup or obstructions either that are on the dryer motor now or could be in the near future. To put the dryer back together, you're going to use the belt and push the drum back into place, making sure that the dryer felt is on the rear of the drum and the plastic front of the dryer drum is on the front. You'll need to make sure to place it on the back of the bulkhead. The dryer drum won't actually stay in place doing this, so I suggest using a five inch high box to hold the drum into place while you get ready to reinstall the idler pulley. The left side of the pulley needs slotted into the square hole in the dryer chassis as you see. You'll then pull the idler pulley to the right and loop the belt in the middle of the idler and then place the belt on the motor spindle. 
If you do all this right, you can slowly turn the dryer drum in place to make sure it operates properly. Make sure you remove the box when you get this done and any other tools you may have left underneath the dryer drum. When you install the dryer door, this is what gets really frustrating and I'm not good at filming the whole installation, putting the door back on the front. The most frustrating part is that the door has two small squares on each side of the bottom of the door and they rest on each side of the chassis. In addition, the dryer drum has to rest on the front bulkhead too. The best way to do this, press the front of the dryer door flush with the dryer chassis, then lift up and rest the door on the hooks. Sometimes you may only get one side when you attempt this, but then can work on the other side independently. This looks easy, but it took me about three minutes of filming to properly fit everything back together, and it can take a few tries for sure. One of the last things is to simply put 5 16 screws back into the door frame to secure it. Make sure that the black metal clips are in place that will line up all the holes from the chassis and the door and the clip itself. Also, make sure to have a hand underneath the screw when you install it so that if it falls on accident, you catch it. Otherwise, you're going to have to take the door apart again, hunt for the screws, and then take up a whole lot more time fitting that door back on. Once this is done, finally put the wire harness back together with the door switch and you're essentially done. Gently put the lid back down on the dryer and ensure the front clips snap into place. You'll then put the screws back into the lint filter blower housing and you're done, hopefully finding